I, I've got so much respect for him. Uh, you're right, the experience does factor in. You know, he, he's experienced a lot of situations and he's probably learned from every single one of them. And then there's there's certainly a calmness on his end, I would imagine, um, because he's been there, done that. He's been there, done that with this group of guys at the same time. Um, but on the flip side of it, we spend a lot of time and effort talking through situations um, with our coaching staff and then and then figuring out which ones we want to incorporate with our team as well that we present to them. Um, and so, again, I've got a lot of faith in, in our communication process and our players being able to handle uh, difficult situations that come up on a, on a moment's notice at the end of a game or end of a half or critical moment. I think we've been a really good situational team this year. Our players have handled that. And so I've got the confidence that we'll be able to handle those, those moments in big games like this. Zach Taylor, a year <laughs> removed from being the subject of rumors he was out in Cincinnati, is in the AFC Championship game for the first time, taking on Andy Reid, who is the first coach ever to take two different teams to four straight wow. conference title games. Wow. That is amazing. He's already a Hall of Famer. Yeah, that just, my goodness, just hammers it in. Eagles, 2001 through 2004, finally got to a Super Bowl in 2004, lost by three points to the Patriots. And Chiefs now, four straight, two straight Super Bowl appearances, a Super Bowl win, incredible, helps to have Patrick Mahomes, but still helps to have a good team around him and a coach who knows how to put it all together and make it happen, and Andy Reid has made it happen. Unbelievable achievement, and now they get this one at home. In a year where home field advantage has continued to be not, and last week it was not for three of the home teams, it was for the Chiefs, and I think home field means a hell of a lot for the Chiefs, especially where they don't have to worry about Chiefs fans selling a lot of tickets to Bengals fans like they have to worry about in L.A. with the 49ers fans taking over so far. Uh, agreed. And, and where I look at this game to be maybe home field advantage plays a little bit bigger part in the game is – the little bit of what we saw last week. And, of course, I know week 17 they played and it was in Cincinnati. But what we saw last week, and that would, that would be what scares me. And what I mean by that is the, the pass rush. You know, that, that's, that's probably the number one thing you worry about if I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan or evaluating the football game. I just go, whoa. Again, like we talked earlier this week, I've never seen a team go to the Super Bowl who got dominated like that up front. And now and be in the, in the divisional round and now be in the Super Bowl, you know, two games later. That, that's a different one for me. I mean, there's parts in that football game where if you didn't look at the scoreboard, you'd go, well, the Tennessee Titans are winning this, right? They're, they're up by 10. If you didn't know the turnovers happened, I mean, it was com there was moments of complete domination by the Titans' D-line. And that's where I would worry about the crowd noise a little bit here. Young offensive line in Cincinnati, not all that great. And... We know there's some absolute studs on that D-line in Kansas City. Chris Jones, he's right out there with Aaron Donalds and Jeffrey Simmons as the best you know, defensive tackles in football. Frank Clark is really damn good. Melvin Ingram has found a resurgence since he got to Kansas City, and that's where I do look at the crowd being a little bit of a, a factor in this one, Mike. And I I've struggled with this one all week long and fortunately I have a few more hours before I have to make a pick the Bengals right now have that vibe of we don't care please pick against us please it fuels us we're ready you don't think we're ready we're ready you think we're underdogs we don't we think we can beat anyone I just feel like right now I feel like the Chiefs unless they have a letdown and remember I said last week the Bills could have a letdown if they finally dispense with the Patriots one week the Chiefs the next and then they're the favorite again, and they win a close emotional game. Can they, can they get back up again for a team like the Bengals? I think that applies to the Chiefs a little bit after the way that the game ended and scoring with 13 seconds left on the clock, starting the drive with 13 seconds left on the clock, scoring with none to force overtime, and then winning the game. But it's the Chiefs. I feel like anybody, any team that you would drop into Arrowhead Stadium – is going to have a hell of a time this Sunday. You get the 85 Bears back together again in January of 86 and drop them into Arrowhead, they're going to have a hell of a time with this Chiefs team. I feel like right now, just like with the Rams, it's kind of like, and this isn't this what we want? Don't we want the best teams to declare themselves yes. on the brink of the Super Bowl? Yes. And I feel like that's what the Chiefs are doing. And you mentioned the pass rush. Yeah, I mean, somehow, I, it, the Saturday games really felt like lesser team pulled a rabbit out of their hat 
And I don't know that conference championship weekend is going to be an occasion for pulling rabbits out of hats or other places. Right. I just I feel like that's where the luck runs out. I, I, I hear you there. I do. I, I mean, I do think I look at it and go, the Chiefs, you know, as a whole, probably a little bit better than the Bengals. Bengals are scary though, because because of, of what you said. You know, they're just – they're happy to be here. This is fun. They don't care. I don't think they even feel the pressure of the moment. And with this new age young athlete, the Joe Burrows and the Jamar Chases and the T. Higgins, I just – I don't know. They don't seem to feel pressure. It's just like Patrick Mahomes. It's just – I don't it, – it's like we went through an era in the 90s and the, the 2000s where quarterbacks were under pressure and it took a little while to get good in the league. And some of these young stars on both of these teams, they just come in the league like, what? what's the big deal? It's just the NFL. It's still football. Who cares? And then the Bengals do have that. And when you got stars, you know, you do believe in yourself 100% that they're going to make plays. Uh, but – but to your point, I hear what you're saying. And other than that end of the game there where you know they lose to the Bengals in Week 17, the Chiefs have gotten just better and better since mid-November. And I think they're another team like the Rams who have gotten better even since Week 17 loss to the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, you know, we're, we're over the phase of like um, – this is where it's a little different. Like it's official now. Kansas City's offense, right? Oh, can they be patient? We'll be, we'll play, you know, umbrella defenses and play zone coverage, and they won't be patient, and they'll make a mistake. Well, that crap's over. That you you play that style of football this weekend, you're gonna lose. I, how patient did you have to see Mahomes be the other night, or the game before that, or the game before that? It's been extremely patient. They got all the answers. He's playing as good as he's played all year, just at the right time. They got Hill and Kelsey going. Uh, there is a little semblance of a run game where you can't just totally disregard it, just like we saw last week in the game. They ran the ball enough, you know, about 87 yards with the running backs. And what does that do? That leads to McCole Hardman's reverses being a little more effective, and he runs for a touchdown. So there is some problems here, certainly. But with that firepower on the Bengals' offensive side, and if the Chiefs don't change their approach a little bit from the first matchup, I, the, the Bengals could go in there and pull off the upset because of that. And that's what scares me just a little bit. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.